Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It's Friday. It's Friday, Paul. It's Friday, May 10th. I'm Beth Stevens. Thank God it's Friday. Remember that song? No, don't remember it. I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are here with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And... What's the deal with today's <gasps> guest? We never get enough of that. We never get enough of it. <laughs> Gideon Glick is here from yes. To Kill a Mockingbird. Yay. And we will get to Gideon very shortly. Tony nominee. Finally. What he said. But first, our top five. We found out who's taken the band on the road. We did find out. Should we and say what's the deal for every news story today? <laughs> no? Yes. What's the deal with the band's visit tour? <laughs> what's the deal with Shalina Kennedy? What's the deal with Sasson Gabe still Ooh. playing that part? I We're into when it. I say it like that. Yeah. So that, I just, that's the that whole news good. story. That's good. So the national tour of the band's visit is hitting the road in Providence. When is that? Soon. June 25th it starts. It's playing over 30 cities in, all around North America. And Sasson Gabe, I remember the day I learned how to He's say his very name. Very good. It's very good. Who played uh, Tupic. Is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. In the movie, and then it, and then he took over for Tony Shalhoub, who I saw last night randomly at Tootsie. He's around. Hanging out um, in the show? <laughs> he t- was, he was he Dorothy Michaels? Oh, no. Oh. Okay. He was in the Michael audience. Dorsey. He wasn't in it. Okay. Um, uh, too big. Anyway, he's now doing the tour, and Shalina Kennedy, who we were just talking about, she's she's back in Beautiful. Mm-hmm. She's leaving Beautiful. Correct. You never know when she's going to be in Beautiful, but, but she now beautiful. she's going to be uh, on the road for a year uh, playing Dina. Fantastic mm-hmm. part. Great part in the band's visit. And of course, David Yazbek, speaking of Tootsie, uh, wrote the score, and Itamar Moses, they all won Tonys, everyone won a Tony, including David Cromer, the director. Itamar Moses wrote the book. I didn't fill in my sentence. No, but we know what you meant. David Cromer, thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Anyway, it's going to be good. (laughs) Go see it. And we found out who's going to rather be her on tour. We're talking about Mean Girls, in case you didn't catch that. Lyric reference. What's the deal with lyric references? (laughs) I'm all about this. I love a lyric reference. We have some casting for the Mean Girls tour. Mary Kate Morrissey has been cast as Janice. Well, is this the only casting we know? Yeah. Yes. We literally just found out who's playing Janice. Yeah. <laughs> that was the most important thing to lock That's in. Right. And okay. then, of course, I was like, which one's Janice? <laughs> Barrett Wilbert Weed. Okay. <laughs> just in case. Like, I didn't know. I just Janice. forgot. They all the have these one. names. The edgy one. Yeah, the one with the hair, the art. <laughs> uh, you know. Mary Kate is a former alphabet of the Wicked Tour. Oh, that's why we needed to know. Because she's got a big a voice. Former alphabet. Oh, she's, she's done a whole bunch of things. And anyway, the, the road production, or you called it the road production, oh. the tour, or you could call it the North tour, American will tour. kick <laughs> off on September 21st in Buffalo, New York. N- more casting soon. I hope it's not one every day, though, because that's a lot oh, to do. That'd be God. smart. Keep up. I hate with when they roll out news like that. <laughs> What's the deal? I'll stop. What's I'll, the stop. Deal? <laughs> I'll stop. And you guys got even more time to see this show that just opened off Broadway. What's the deal with that new MCC theater? I haven't oh, been there yet. It's supposed to be very nice. It's got right. a lot of names. Well, now uh, they have a new hit. Blacks had just, it is extended. It's mm-hmm. written by Aziza it? Barnes. Uh, didn't it just open this week? Last Yesterday. Week. It was supposed to close May 26th. Um, and now, which is Memorial Day. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Thank you. In case now anyone it'll has play it, through mark your calendar. <laughs> Now to, or it's the weekend. I don't know. Now I'll play through June second. Mm-hmm. It's at the Newman Mills Theater at the Ro- oh I love this the Newman Mills Theater <laughs> at the Robert W Wilson MCC Theater space. This reminds me of the um, Pershing Square signature. signature. I was there last night. We were just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I brought it up. Uh, it stars Paige Gilbert, Alfie Fuller, and Antoinette Crow Legacy. Good name. Playing Octavia, Amani, and June three, New York City twenty somethings hunting for intimacy and purpose in a city that doesn't seem to care. Well, Robert O'Hara directs it. It's a hit. Just go see it. And this news is kicking off our campaign to revive the full Monty. Come on. Oh, my God. Da-da-da, Come da-da-da, on. Da-da-da, What's da-da-da, the da-da-da, deal with us talking about da-da-da. David Yazbek incessantly? <laughs> okay. The full Monty, which is one of our favorite shows, had a reading. And, and Gideon Glicks. And Gideon Glicks. Glicks. Well, he likes it, too. And possibly because his To Kill a Mockingbird co-star, Stark Sands, led this reading with Deborah Monk and Adam Chandler Brock. Wasn't that a good show? It's Mon- so good. I mean, not to kill Mon- Mon- that was good too. Uh, the the full Monty, not just because of the whole n- nudity thing. Okay. <laughs> the producer is Tom Curdahy. Yep. He's a very well-known mm-hmm. guy. Who's also producing Frankie and Johnny and the Claire de Lune, and the upcoming The Inheritance. Your Ooh. French is amazing today. Um, Tony Nami, Lee Silverman, <laughs> directed the reading, and uh, also included were Philip Boykin. Bonnie Milligan, Craig Hildreth, Kanita R. Miller, Alicia Umfress, and more. All great people. It's good. Great people. 
We love this show. So hopefully it means there'll be a Broadway revival. Also, soon. if the original cast wants to get together for a benefit concert, I'm I'm ready. Even in this room, didn't we offer yeah, we're, that? We yeah, we're that's here. Fine. We're waiting. We'll love it. And some of our faves are heading to the small screen officially. So this sounds like something that uh, that our deal? readers will be getting into, our viewers, yeah. right? Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist mm -hmm. is a brand new NBC TV show. The reason why you might like it is because they will sing. People will sing on it, and we like when they sing. Um, and it stars Jane Levy as Zoe, who learns that she can hear the inner thoughts of people in the form of big musical numbers. So it's like what Broadway oh God, fans do. God, that sounds do. exhausting. It's like seeing Broadway musical. But the reason why you might be really interested is uh, Skylar Astin um, will be in it, who, of course, was in a Spring Awakening with a certain person in this room. Uh, and Alex Newell uh, will play... So Skylar will play Zoe's best friend, Max, and Alex Newell of Once on this Island, who I believe won a Tony for Once on this Island, correct? In my heart, he did. Uh, playing the neighbor, Mo. And Peter that. Gallagher. I love that Alex Newell's playing Mo. Anyway, well, NBC picked it up. It's supposed to be fantastic. Peter Gallagher is also in it, who needs to come back to Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, I sent his daughter to Broadway, but he's not here. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. <laughs> uh, first season premiere date will be announced soon. But that's not it, Beth. No, there's more. There are other things on the site, yeah. like Tommy Bracco, shirtless. <sighs> Tommy Bracco Sell of it, Paul. Um, Pretty Woman. <laughs> Uh, fantastic Pretty Woman standout. He's the newest Gotta Dance um, feature. What else? We have opening, opening night. photos of BLKS recently yes. extended to Stars in the June Alley 2nd. photos? Are those up? Yeah, yes, they're up. Oh, they're up? Yeah. They're up. It just happened and they're up. They're up. Just go they're enjoy up, that. Baby. I think we had video on our Facebook page, right? Oh, yes, she we went did. live. I've been. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Judy Garland, the Judy Garland movie. With Renee, Renee Zellweger, Zellweger is playing Judy so Garland. That's mm -hmm. going to be good. Uh, Taylor Swift said that the, the cats will not have fur. No. So <laughs> what? We, we talk about the cats movie a lot, and it turns out they're not where they're going to digitally add the fur and the whiskers. So literally, we could be in cats. They would just add it to. Uh, yeah, they they probably wore like body suits, maybe or green. I don't know what's, what's so going funny on. about that. They they're not they're not going to have fur. And that's the UJA the Federation uh, honored Thomas Schumacher of, of Disney, Disney Theatrical. Theatrical. So that's Paul, a, I think I've caused Friday. enough trouble. I'm out. Yeah. It's been nice <laughs> Have a nice you. weekend, Beth. Thank you. You have too. Have fun with Kitty and Glick. I will. Caitlin, tell us about our guest, please. Gladly. Yes, we have the Gideon Glick here with us in the studio today because he's currently playing Dill in To Kill a Mockingbird, which earned him his very first Tony Award nomination. Uh, he's, he's previously been on Broadway in Spring Awakening, Significant Other. Um, he, he's been seen on screen in Ocean's 8, A Favorite, Wallflowers, The Detour, Margot vs. Lily. He's... He's been in a whole lot of things. Be sure to follow him on social media at Gidglick. And please leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Gideon and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hi, Gideon. Hi, Beth. I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to be here. Did you enjoy our What's the Deal news set segment? God, we're kooky today. <laughs> we're I'm feeling kooky, too. It's the end of the week for us. It's the beginning of like a lot of performances for you. Yeah, we're in a nine-show week. That's a lot. Yeah. So how's it going? What's the deal? <sighs> With being Just a Tony nominee, Tony oh, nominated. Man. How's your oh, Tony man. nominated life? It's wild. To be honest, it doesn't feel real. It feels like I'm living in an alternate universe, and the other universe is going forward, and I've kind of gone to the right. Does that make sense? No, but I want to go. With, I want to go there with you. Okay. What is your universe like? Um, this alternate universe that I'm yeah, living the, in? the one you're in right now. It's Share just it that me. I don't really believe it. It's just very strange. It's very strange. I'll say, when I'm on stage, that's when it kind of feels real. But, like, on the day-to-day, -day, it doesn't. So you feel like a Tony nominee when you step out as a child in no. To Kill a Mockingbird? I actually never feel like a Tony nominee. <laughs> it just only feels real because I'm like, oh, this is the play that I'm doing that that oh, happened in. So you're, you're jolted back to that world. Jolted back to reality. In Alabama. As a 10-year-old. As a 10-year-old. <laughs> So I have talked to a lot of the To Kill a Mockingbird people. Yes, you have. And our heroine and idol, Latanya Richardson Jackson, was here recently. Uh -huh. And she said she has to, she's doing a very serious scene with Jeff Daniels. And she looks out the window, which no one else can see out the window except for her. And apparently there were some shenanigans going on with you children. She said you basically ask, act like children all the time. Yeah, well, we're treated like children, too. Oh. <laughs> um, Wait a minute. We do this cross... And I think because we're six months in, that we've been told many times to stop doing this, we like to um, do something different every day. 
So she said she looked out and yeah. Celia was like, you know how you do the wheelbarrow thing when you're a kid with like your legs up? Yeah. Yeah, we've done that. She said that. it was a good thing Jeff Daniels didn't look out the window. We've done leapfrog. Oh. Sometimes we pretend to throw poop <laughs> into the window. Like, we're children. <laughs> we're children. I'm being too honest right now. I think I need to tone it down. No, no, we like honesty. You're home. You're probably not home. <laughs> I am home. I belong here. <laughs> it's I your place. I belong here. I love it here. We love having you here. Thanks. So <laughs> <laughs> take it in. Take your time. Oof, you know, the last time you were here for show people, Paul asked you... Yeah. about what project you'd like to do with Jonathan Groff. And you've had some time to think about it. Oh, God. So go ahead and tell I haven't thought about it. Well, that's why we asked you back. Oh, God. So. Well, you should have told me ahead of time. No, well, he gave you a warning. It hasn't been written yet. I'll say that. <laughs> oh, I hasn't been written what yet. a cop-out answer. But it, it is a musical. Mm. Who's writing we, it? Um, oh, God. I'll say Bart Shear. He's writing it? Oh, I thought you said he was directing <laughs> it. I'm half deaf. I'm um, deaf. That's who's fair. writing it? I don't know who's writing it. I want Jane Howdy's show in it. That's what I've decided. And John and I might have been lovers in it. I think we're, like we're, in the first we're not in the relationship anymore. Oh, okay. No, I think it starts ex -lovers. after it's over. Ex-lovers. Yeah, we're ex-lovers. <laughs> so far, I like your alternate reality, by the way. <laughs> it's really awesome. And I love the Jane Howdy show. I can't show. tell. Are we in it? Are Jane we not Howdy in it? Jane Howdy show is somehow in this show. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we haven't figured out who, who's writing it. You can get back to us. We'll, we'll invite you back. Next Live at Five. <laughs> <laughs> Next show, people. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk about To Kill a Mockingbird because you've Shall talked we? a lot about finding the sort of queer heart to, to kill a mockingbird. And I love that you're doing that and that you're talking about that. And I want you to tell us a little more about it. Well, here's what I'm... I've been very reflective the past week or two. <laughs> I've been feeling very grateful very honored, um, and, I, and I feel kind of emotional that Dill is being recognized. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm, I feel very emotional that I'm being recognized, but that Dill is, and I, I kind of feel that it, this couldn't happen, this couldn't have happened before. We're in 2019, we're in a modern age, right. and all of a sudden this kind of queer narrative has been, which has been there all along, has kind of come to the forefront. And in the same way, you know, uh, People don't talk about Dill that much. I don't think we learn about Dill. And I, and I feel like now in our modern times that has happened and it's really moving. It is moving. There's a lot, not a lot, but there is some gender nonconformity in the book. There is, yes. With Scout as well. Yes. And there's been some questions about Harper Lee's sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. We don't know the answer to that. No, we but can only speculate. you can take a reading of it any way you want. And you've taken a very specific reading about her friendship with Truman Capote uh -huh. and celebrated it, which is really great. Well, I kind of think it's a radical queer novel in a, in a strange way. You're having this... That's on everybody's syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has this. Reason. But it's what I said before that it's never been taught, and I've said this ad nauseum, but it, it's still kind of... I hope that this show changes that. And I think it might. And that's really exciting to me. So what were you picking up from the book and from Aaron Sorkin's adaptation that you are allowing yourself or that he was picking up on to push that character in that direction? Well, I mean, you know, we know he's based off Truman Capote, so that was yeah. an obvious leap. Tr but Truman Capote apparently loved telling people that. Um, Truman Capote loved to tell people a lot of things about himself. Yes, he did. Um, and I love that about Truman Capote. <laughs> and and, and it, it's in the book. It's in, They talk about his strangeness, his queerness, the way he dresses. It's mm -hmm. kind of... Um, there have been a lot of interviews about... Um, about Monroeville and, and Harper Lee and Capote growing up together, that they kind of would think about swapping genders, mm, and that they thought, of, they thought of Capote as a, as a woman and, and Harper Lee as a man. And I, you know, that's a, I think our vocabulary, the, their vocabulary back then is not as nuanced as it is now, right. but I think that's their way of, of understanding this kind of fluidity. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really, it was just so exciting to find, I felt like almost like, like a detective or an excavator. And, it, and the fact that it was there the whole time is really still what baffles me. Yeah, I, just, I don't feel like it's in the movie. No, it's not in the movie at, at all. all. But Though the actor was, was gay. Oh, really? Yes. But it's not as, it, you have to look for it a little bit more. Yeah. And not so anymore. is there anything that you have externally, like in your costumes or in some physicality that you're, you're getting to explore that with? You mean in terms of the, the queerness? The queerness or just like finding Dill. Yeah, I mean, it's somewhat in his posture. It's the way he kind of, like, 
goes about this kind of this there's a there's a there's a grandness the way he presents himself. And right. What's his full name? His name is Charles Baker Harris. I didn't do the accent. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come see. He the loves show. to tell his tell you his name. He loves to say his name. Um, yeah, and that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's this presentation, like and formality. So, yeah. Yeah, and and I, you know I'm very like <laughs> you know I'm very inward. I'm pretty introverted. I'm anxious, and and he's not. And there's no. something really freeing about about doing that. And I was nervous at first because I've been playing a lot of more introverted. Um, neurotic characters and I was worried you know I naturally get very anxious as a performer and so I've been able to utilize that with my anxious characters but <laughs> yeah. here I was like what do I do yeah he has a lot of poise he has a lot of poise yeah because I think he thinks of himself in, in a certain way so he holds himself I love that way. your shoulders just get going when you talk about yeah. it yeah <laughs> gotta calm it down <laughs> gotta save it for the show Whoa. <laughs> I, I know you all have questions, so Caitlin, yes. let's get to it. Yes, definitely. So Nicolette says, I'm an English teacher, and after seeing To Kill a Mockingbird, I cannot teach the book the same way ever again. It How did me. Aaron Sorkin's slight adjustment of the book change your perception of some of these characters? Yes, well, Aaron, that's a really good question, and I'm excited to hear that about Nicolette. Uh, Aaron kind of challenged the notions that we've held so dear about, about Mockingbird, about civility, about... Mm -hmm. about um, walking around in another man's skin. And there's a, an incredible line where um, Calpurnia, uh, Atticus says, I believe in being respectful. And she says, no matter who you're disrespecting by doing it. And it really mm -hmm. moves me. And I think now I, what I hope is that it's taught that this was kind of the thinking back then. And what, what is our modern way of understanding this book and in terms of understanding our modern times. And I think Aaron's done a really good job of bringing that up, and I hope teachers do the same. Love that. Uh, Max says, how would you describe the work developing a character in a play versus developing a character in a musical? Oh, it's been a long time since I've done a musical. <laughs> um, we've got one coming up with Jonathan think, Groff. Oh, yeah, it's coming Hunter. out very soon. <laughs> Jane, are you there? Um, uh, it's the same. It's mm -hmm. the same. I mean, I think the process is different and, and creating... Uh, not the process, but the... the um, the day-to-day -day of, of maintaining mm. your voice and, and so forth is different, but it, the approach has to be the same. We're, we're artists, we're actors. I mean, you know, we've, we've spoken about how this category of, of uh, featured actor, they're all they're musical all, theater yeah. actors too, and it, there, there is no difference. It's just, it's just art, it's just people. We're just portraying people. So let's think about who these people are and why they say the things they say. Do you, have you been discussing that with your fellow nominees? In, as there's so many events. There's, There's so, so many, many events. events that yes, you're going and it's to. only just beginning. Mm -hmm. um, we have talked about it a little bit, but I think we're going to talk about it some more <laughs> <laughs> at many other events. Many other Are events. you feeling? Um, I know that it, it's obviously a big honor, but it, some people have described it to me as like a part-time job being a Tony nominee because you have to go to all these events and you have to get dressed up yeah. and you have to stay up late uh -huh. and talk to people mm -hmm. a lot, see? Yeah. And you get that face like I'm talking to you again about this thing that I already <laughs> talked about earlier today. Uh -huh. <laughs> And it's a lot of the same people over and over again. So how? But it's you, how exciting to see Beth Stevens all the time. <laughs> it really is. All right, you can and come back. You can come back. It's fine. And your interview. I really liked your interview questions at the at the press junket. It was a we nice. It different. was a nice little respite. <laughs> <laughs> just a little like it was vacation. Just some, some fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's happening <laughs> uh -oh. Again. <laughs> He's getting grand. <laughs> but how is it? How are you holding up with all of that stuff? You have a long play to do. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you got two show days, and yeah. then there are these. You know. Red carpet things. I feel tired but grateful. I feel very grateful right now. So I'm, and I understand that this is only a month of my life. So yeah. the mm -hmm. way I'm taking it is that I'm just going to enjoy it as much as I can. And I get to talk to really interesting people. And, and what's really exciting about how the community is so small. And, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, these people that you admire and that you get to, you've seen all their work, you get to actually talk to them. And, and, and yeah, you normally don't see them at all. You just do your thing. You do your thing, or you see them from afar, or sometimes mm -hmm. you can see them, but now everyone's in the room together. And <laughs> so it's really, I don't know, I'm very, I'm very excited about the whole thing. So who are you bringing to the Tonys? I'm bringing my fiancé, Perry Dubin. Mm. Is your mom coming? Um, your mother's a delight on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> She's Barbie? She's watching right Is now. Is it Barbie? Or she will eventually right. watch Barbie, yes. yes. Bar did you read about the chicken rockets? I did, and then I immediately followed your mother. <laughs> Well, you're going to get a lot about media. Media, media and journalism. Yes. I love that stuff. Yes. yes. I, I She's a professor. She's a professor of, of communications at the University <clears throat> of Pennsylvania. 
Um, so Perry's coming. He's your date. So Perry's coming. He's my date. Yes. Uh, my mom can purchase a ticket, but they're very expensive. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know about that. Maybe she'll stay home and tweet about it. She can live tweet. She can live tweet on her chicken rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to explain to the people? So basically, <laughs> she was texting Perry, and he responded with um, uh, the the. Finger, nail polish? The nail polish emoji. And she said, what are those, chicken rockets? And he said, what are chicken rockets? And, and she never responded. <laughs> and, and then I asked her, and she won't answer. And, so I, <laughs> and now we're shaming her on Live at Five. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I feel like she's gaslighting <laughs> all of us. Maybe. It's really what it is. You might never hear from her again. <laughs> <We'll> never. <She's laughs> that's blasting it. blasting off on her chicken rocket. And that's why I had to follow her, because... I totally get her. <laughs> I totally. I got mean, it. all of her Twitter though is going to either be about like media at risk. It's like right. how Trump is affecting the media, or tweets back at me. So that's <laughs> that's really it. I think that's a wonderful balance. Wonderful. All right, we have time for one more question. Yes. So this will be our last question. So Kurt asks, "What has been your most memorable, defining experience from your earliest days in theater growing up in Philadelphia?" Oh my God. Take us to the what early days. Is research. Research. What will we'll define it? That's a really good question. I. It's, I really just remember the kind of smell, the time, I, hmm. of being at the Prince Music Theater. I did a couple shows there, and I remember just the excitement of going in from the suburbs and going into the city every day after school and doing a show and going to the and how, Sabaro at what age Pizza. Were you? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I started professionally at 11 at the Wilma Theater, and then um, uh, over the next couple of years I did, I think I did, I did two musicals at, uh, at the Prince, and I was also in an uh, inner-city youth hip-hop group uh, right. that As I think we we've know. talked about before. Have we? we talked to Sarah Steele about it, didn't I you? Did talk yeah, to Sarah, yeah. Steele about <laughs> it. Sarah Steele was in it. Dan Kluger, a Tony nominee sound engine designer, is, uh, he was in it. Um, Molly Ephraim was in it. She played Little Red in that last revival yes, she of did. Into the Wood. Um, and so, and, and so all of Rainbow Company, which is that hip-hop group, um, Rainbow they Company. performed at The Prince. And so I just have this, um, God, it just, it's, it's nostalgia is what it is. Do you have a Harper Lee-like childhood friend? Yeah. Her name was Dana. I don't remember her last name. <laughs> so we close. Were, we were like um, early elementary school best friends, and we would talk about how we wanted to trade genders. And I, cause mm. I wanted to wear dresses, and I wanted to be a girl, and she wanted to be a boy, and that's that's very that's that's in the book basically. That's it's all there. It's all there. Do you want to show us any of your hip hop moves before we go? No, no, I don't. I, <laughs> no, you I already can't. gave us the shoulder move. I will move. break things. I will break myself. <laughs> it just it's not it's not good. All right. Well, don't say I didn't give you the opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait till the next time. <laughs> You guys, Gideon Glick will be back every Friday <laughs> for the rest of the summer, so please enjoy him on Live at Five. Go see To Kill a Mockingbird if you haven't. Congratulations on Thanks, being a Tony Beth. nominee. I hope your mom tweets back at you. Caitlin, will you take us on that? <laughs> yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in on Monday when we talk to Tony winner Joanna Gleason all about her upcoming concerts.